from Six Points Woodworks. We're beginning final assembly on our plywood epoxy water tanks that'll go inside our 41 foot trawler yacht that we're building in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now she was designed with the home builder in mind and once complete she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. <music> Unlike our diesel tanks, our water tanks are freestanding, so they don't have any plywood bulkheads to rely on for support. So they will need some kind of internal structure to attach the plywood to. Without an internal structure, we would be forced to attach the plywood to itself, and while it'll hold fasteners very well across the grain, along the edges would be a weak point. So using white oak as the internal structure is going to add significant amount of strength and durability for the long term. The process to build the internal structure starts with machining up all our rough cut lumber and then going on to cut it to shape, including grooves and dados to allow everything to fit together nicely. Now just like when you're applying any kind of coating, whether it be paint or stain, in this case epoxy, they don't like sharp corners, so we need to be careful to round over any areas that we can and we'll use a router to speed that process up. Our water tanks will reside in the forward part of the boat in the bilge area and they'll rest right on top of the floor timbers. However, we needed to build a little bit of a platform so that they cleared all the frame members and with the help of a laser level we're able to get accurate measurements so that we can bevel those supports and maximize the height of each tank so we can get the most volume possible. Certainly not unexpected, but definitely not planned for. Our roof here failed, obviously. We've got nearly two years out of it, which I'm happy with, and I had actually planned to replace it this fall, but I guess Mother Nature had other plans. So she just deteriorated enough that uh, she started to tear along the seams, and I came out one morning and it was all torn. So we had to take a break from construction in order to repair the roof and keep us working in the dry environment. Now, the thing that I added this time was a shade cloth, a greenhouse shade cloth. 
in hopes of trying to keep the temperature down inside. And so far, so good. It really is an effective means of deflecting a little bit more of that sunlight to keep the temperature down. Everything dry fit really nice, everything looks square, we're finally <laughs> ready to do some actual assembly. So all that's left is to uh, wipe down the white oak surfaces with some acetone that just uh, breaks down the oils in white oak which can interfere with epoxy adhesion. Sometimes epoxy and white oak don't get along. This particular variety of white oak that we use, I've never had a problem but we'll just be on the safe side and we'll follow all the rules.
Now we still have a lot to do interior wise for all these seams and that'll include more glass and the same five to six coats of resin rich epoxy. But while I still have some wet epoxy here, we'll start that process just by starting to build, build up in the corners here, fill any gaps that I can't see. Also kind of acts like a weld in the sense that it does add strength. All right, everything looks good. Uh, we'll let these end walls set up before we do anything else, and this is really all I can do for the end walls on these tanks because I only have four of these uh, angle gauges and I want to use them on all of them. So tank number two will have to wait. Obviously, we still have to work on our baffles and our sidewalls and stuff, but the process has begun. So while this sets up, now we'll move back into the boat shed and start working on some of the panel stuff that's going to be installed on our diesel tanks. sides on our fuel tanks we needed to make sure we had access to the engine room now this is just a man door for routine maintenance and you know oil changes or problem solving there'll be a larger hatch in the pilot house that will lead down into the engine room and that'll be large enough to get the engine out should the need arise or to get any large equipment that might be needed in uh, so for right now I only made this 18 inches by 40 you know, I can always make it bigger, but it's very difficult to make things smaller. So this will do for now and it'll allow us to get in here and uh, get really working on our, our fuel tanks. Obviously the heart of this system is the epoxy coated plywood panels and you can go online and find out lots of information about the process from one of the major epoxy manufacturers and while they'll never sanction or recommend that you build your diesel or water tanks out of epoxy and plywood, it's been done many times before and the process to do it is explained quite clearly. That process includes a specific resin rich mixture of epoxy resin to hardener along with very thorough mixing which includes a two pot mixing method. We need to make sure that all the hardener is used up in the chemical reaction that creates that inert plastic that epoxy becomes. Once the epoxy has cured past the green phase where you can't dent it with your thumbnail, it also requires some post-cure heating. And that means the surface of the epoxy panel needs to be heated up above 120 degrees and held there for four to six hours. We tried a few different methods of applying the epoxy to the surface of each panel and that include a technique called flow coating and also the use of another product called peel ply. Now my favorite is just flow coating which is essentially just pouring out a little bit more uh, epoxy onto the surface and then spreading it out with a squeegee. Uh, it seemed to be the simplest and fastest way. It really can only be used in the application that we're doing where the panels are flat or else obviously the epoxy would run off. The peel ply certainly does have its place, but like anything, it's a skill and I would need more time to practice and get better at using it.
All right, we'll hit these ones from the underside and that will prevent us having to uh, penetrate our finish side on the inside. And that'll hold things in place until the epoxy sets up. Now we've got all the final coats of epoxy on all the panels for the bottom and the back. We've got uh, the panels for all four end walls. Those are complete. And we have one side done on the four panels that will make up our baffles. Now we just gotta take those baffles, flip them over, and do our five to six coats of epoxy just like we've done before. So hopefully in part three of our tank building series, we will have that done and we can start putting everything together so you can get the big picture. I know we're kinda of seeing small parts of the assembly, but hopefully we'll get to the real show coming up soon. Of course, we love hearing from folks, so you can leave a comment below, but I'm gonna remind folks we're taking a page right from the SV Seeker book that if you can't say something politely, don't say anything at all. Uh, we're not gonna tolerate people who are rude or condescending or factually incorrect to me or other commenters here. This isn't some dark corner of the internet uh, where we trade insults. Uh, we're a community of builders here, so please keep your comments on the positive side and respectful side. And if watching these videos or or this style of boat building or what I'm doing here makes you upset or angry, don't watch. You know what I mean? It's life is too short to be upset by some silly YouTube video. There's lots of other channels you can watch. There's lots of other really high quality traditional boat builders out there that you can follow along with uh, that are probably much more deserving of your support than us. So, you know, please don't get upset here when you can go and watch something else that doesn't make you so uh, angry. We want to remind the folks who are current or former police, fire, EMS, communications, the armed forces, if you want to have a patch from your agency represented on our salute to service wall we would be honored to have it so just send me an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com and i'll give you our address and you can get that sent out and we'll put it right up on our wall we hope folks will check out our merchandise store there's a link right below or next to this video and all the proceeds from that store go right back into this boat and help us create content and keep everything on this channel for free so we would really appreciate your support uh, we hope folks will go check out our social media sites. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you like those pages so you can follow along as we work in real time. You can go over to our website at www.seadreamerproject.com and learn about all the steps that we've taken to get to this point in the build. And of course, we hope you'll check out the description in this video where you'll find a link and a discount code that you can use over at Jamestown Distributors. Jamestown has been a huge supporter of ours and we are very grateful and we hope our viewers will help support companies that support the Sea Dreamer Project. So please go check them out. And of course, your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.